Hey guys, Jacob here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at every single weapon in the Back for Blood beta. I'll also be throwing attachments on this weapon so you guys can see exactly how they work and tell you guys exactly what attachments you want to avoid as well. To get right into it, we're going to be starting with the 357 Magnum. And you guys can see here when you scroll over the attachments, you know, what attachments work and which ones do not. You can put the Fast AP Mag on here, Competition Stock. You could even put a Suppressor. But you cannot put a suppressor and the laser sight at the same time. You only have one or the other. And you can put the high zoom if you want and make it look like a Star Wars gun, but I will not be doing that. The footage you guys are seeing as well is on a Xbox Series X. I did play this on PC if you guys watched the previous video when me and some of my friends ran through. Uh, but this was just a little bit easier to record on the Xbox. And also, I was curious to see exactly how it looked on the console. But this is the 357 Magnum. Next, we have the Sawed Off Shotgun which is just pretty much normal. It is one shot, not one after another, so when you shoot this, you have pretty much one shot at a time, which I was wishing it was one after another, but nope, it's just one. And you have the 1911. And you cannot put scopes on this weapon, as you guys will see right here when you scroll over. It does not work. We're going to be using a laser sight on this. That is the 1911. Next is going to be the Tech 9. And you can put a suppressor on this, but you cannot put any of the scopes on, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. That is the Tech 9. Then we have the Desert Eagle, which I'm very excited to see in this game because I was a huge Desert Eagle fan in Left 4 Dead 2. On this, you can put the suppressor. Long barrel, fast mag, stocks, and yes, you even can put the 8x scope, which is a bit ridiculous, but you can do so. And that is pretty much the Desert Eagle. Now we have the two Glocks. You have the Glock 23 standard, and you have the Glock 23 auto. This is the standard first, and you cannot put any scopes on this as well. That's the Glock 23. Now this is the Glock 23 Auto, which is the uh, full auto version. Basically the equivalent to a G18. Then you have the Beretta M9 Burst and the Beretta M9. That's the standard, and this is the burst. That's going to be it for the sidearms. Now we have the submachine guns. This is the Uzi, which a lot of you guys will recognize from Left 4 Dead. Then we have my favorite submachine gun, which a lot of you guys know as a Division fan. The Chris Vector is going to be my go-to almost in any game if they have it. That is the Chris Vector. Now we have the MP5. The UMP-45. And 
Now to the shotguns, we have the first one, which is the Attack 14. You cannot put any scopes on this, but you can upgrade the magazine. You can put a stock on it and a suppressor, which looks really funny, but you can do so. Then we have the 870 Express. That's the 870. And my personal favorite, the Super 90, aka the M1014 or the Benelli M4, whatever you guys want to call it. Then we have the AA-12, which I was personally not expecting the AA-12 to pop up in this game. And yes, you can put a high zoom scope on here if you want to, uh, but I will not be doing that. Now we're going to be getting into the ARs. This is the SCAR. M16, which a lot of you guys know from Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. One thing I will note that some of you guys will obviously notice, the M16 in this game is burst, not full auto, unlike the counterpart in the Left 4 Dead games. We have the AK-47. AK. Then since the M16 is burst, we do have a M4 in this game, which is pretty damn awesome. I'm happy we actually have a M4 style weapon. And this might actually be my favorite AR currently in the game besides the SCAR. Now into the semi-automatic and bold action rifles. We have the ranch rifle, which I'm pretty sure this is based on the Mini 14. I could be wrong. Then we have the M1A. One thing I will note, the sight on this just really bothers me. I don't know why, it just it does. It seems a little off. Then we're going to be getting into the sniper rifles, or the bolt action snipers, not the, you know, this is considered an assault rifle, um, but, you know, it's still semi -matic, like. Then we have the Barrett M95, which this gun, you know, surprised the hell out of me actually seeing it in the game. Because I was not expecting it. Then the last two weapons, we actually have the M249, which I was very excited to see this in the game. We did have the M60 in Left 4 Dead 2. I was excited to see this weapon because it's actually probably my favorite LMG of all time since Battlefield 3. Then 
Then we have the RPK. Then after that, we pretty much have the melee weapons. We have your standard bat. The fire axe, which you guys can't see the firepower and the mobility and how much of stamina they do take when you swing them. Then we have the machete. And the hatchet. And after that, we have the throwables, which are the Molotovs and the grenade. There's also a pipe bomb as well and a flashbang, but they're nowhere to be found in the range currently. That's the Molotov and the grenades. One thing I'm also going to point out about the attachments, which some people may not be aware of, which I'm going to point it out. Um, each attachment can change your pretty much mobility, accuracy, and stuff like that. So when you look at these, make sure you guys uh, check out, you know, things below them. Like, decreases time it takes to enter and exit ADS. Reduces distant, uh, distance that enemies react to gunfire by 50%. Increases damage dealt to unaware enemies by 25%. Then you have effective range, and obviously there's different ones like legendary, then you have uncommon, epic, and rare, stuff like that. So make sure you guys check your attachments as well, and like I said before, if they're broken, avoid them, do not use them, they will make your weapon even worse. But you will see here on the firepower, this makes it go up by 4. And on the range here, you can see this goes up by 24. And the compensator actually gives you handling and mobility. So you can really pick and choose what you want to have. Uh, but currently in the game, if you're in campaign, unless I'm unaware how to do it, if there's an attachment on the gun, it actually stays on there and you can't just pick up attachments from other guns and swap them. But uh, maybe in the future they'll let you do that. Or it could just be based on like, um, oh, I found a legendary extended magazine. And if you want to have a stock for this weapon, you're just going to have to find that legendary stock so you can upgrade the weapon until you have all yellow. Uh, but currently at the moment, you cannot do so. But just keep that in mind when you guys are looking at the weapon attachments. But overall, thank you guys all for watching. I hope this video helped and gave you guys some kind of insight on exactly how the weapons work and how many weapons are currently in the game at the moment. Maybe in the future when they add DLC, we might see a few more and the range might be a little bit more updated. Maybe they might add more tables as well, like right here somewhere or maybe even over here. But uh, I will catch you guys all later. Thank you all for watching. Thank <laughs> you.